Are we doing this? This is yeah, we're doing this it. is hard. Uh, all right, get up, get brain. There we go. All right. Over my laptop. This is <laughs> maybe a bad idea, a, and that's a t- that's a tall one. But we'll just that's this. a lot. All oh right, boy. Hit. There we are. Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. We're pouring. Good more? Times. We're pouring more? No, no, no. You can uh, print. There we go. You're good. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> That's a lot. All right. Hey, it's all good. It's all good. Hey, what are you drinking? So I, what I'm drinking is the Knob Creek. It's a single barrel reserve, uh, nine year. It's nine aged or nine aged, aged nine years. And, uh, uh, it's 120 proof. It is. It's not for the. It's not for the weary. That's for sure. That it's. Whew. So I, what you're saying is the front end of this will be a lot better than the back end of it. <laughs> yeah. I, right. I drink it when uh, when it's like I need to feel something again. <laughs> it makes me feel pain and and it wakes me up again. For a little bit, so. and then you don't feel anything. Yes. Yes. Well, hey, so, I. I, uh, I'm excited. Hold on. on. I got to share what I'm drinking. Yes. Oh yeah. So I'm having, uh, I'll try and frame it. It's a little hard here. Here you go. I'm going to go, I'm going to go full screen here for you, dude. Don't worry. There you go. Uh, here we go. Uh, there we go. Go ahead. Redwood empire. Cool little bottle. It's out of Sonoma County, California. So it's a rye, but it's a, it's a real young rye. It's, it's aged about four ish, five ish years drinks pretty sweet actually like normally i wouldn't just sip on a rye unless that's all i was having for the evening but um it, it's pretty drinkable um you know i think it, i think it's gonna do well for me today it's it's serviceable for sure and it's super cheap rides are usually what like 60 to 100 bucks so yeah this one's 30 to 40 at total wine costco your yeah. local liquor store so yeah i think this anyway. was like 60 60 at at costco like I said, it's really for being 120 proof. I usually don't go that high because it, you know, but every once in a while I like to be a little bit edgy on those type of stuff. So for sure. So about 60, 60 bucks goes really well. Uh, well hey, cheers. Cheers, cheers. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. It's been a long time coming. We've discussed this for a lot and we're totally excited or I'm totally, totally excited uh, about getting this going. Uh, everyone, welcome to a brand new show, a new revamp show of Just Create. It is, uh, you know, it's been on and off again for myself, but uh, I think with this kind of uh, bringing on Nick Heller here, and I'm going to have you kind of just go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit. Everyone knows who I am. Well, you know, people that have watched. No, already. tell tell the <laughs> tell the new followers. This is yeah. tell people when when they're when we're 40 episodes in and they go back to the classics, they want to watch when we were like just awful at this. They still need, you know, they'll probably know you then too, but get just a quick brief intro of yourself. All right. Well, uh, once again, my name is Thomas Duran. I am the founder of TD Films. I've been in video production for over 16 years. Um, it's definitely taken me uh, just a crazy journey. You know, my background was in, into a lot of uh, AV production type stuff, a lot of live broadcasts, but then that took me into where I wanted to be more of a uh, DP, a storyteller. That took me into quickly took me into like realizing that in order for me to be successful, I really need to go the more the entrepreneurial route and start my own company, do it the way I think things should be done from the different experiences that I've had. And uh, so did that uh, started the company about six years ago. And then through that, uh, just learning a lot. And then I feel like there's a uh, there's just been a need for not only talking about how video should be done or how, you know, how the video production processes, but how to help out, how that should help out other creatives and, and also other businesses, how to actually use their video. So I kind of started this, uh, just create this. And the whole point of it was just to take action. Um, doesn't matter how bad you are at first, just go ahead and do it. That's what's going to use the only way you get better. Um, you know, all those cliches that you can have 
And so just like this show, you know, hopefully it just gets better <laughs> as the more I do yeah. it. So, yeah, yeah. um, but I, you and I have been working extensively together lately. Uh, we kind of been finding ourselves a very much parallel lines of where we want our careers to be, where we want to do, how to get our message out. And so it was just a beautiful opportunity where I thought that this show bringing you on as, as a, as a, you can call it whatever you want to call it, co-host, a, a guy that c comes by and be, you know, to do this with me. And uh, it just works out to where uh, your schedule and your uh, availability or your your willingness. That's the word I was looking for. Your willingness to come on and do this with me. I'm really, really excited because you definitely have tons of expertise when it comes to the creative field. You're amazingly talented. I'll let you kind of explain what you do. But uh, with your background in, in design um, through web graphic. I every, pretty much dabbled into a lot of stuff that you're just, you're, you're amazing talent. And I like to, you know, hang out with talented people. Yeah, man. I appreciate that. Um, I, I think first of all, thanks for having me on. I'm, I'm looking forward to being involved. Very willing. Uh, I'm going to call myself for now a Sherpa, which means I will guide everyone, help guide everyone on this journey. Um, no, Thomas, you're really the Sherpa. I'm just the side right. piece. So <laughs> everyone um, likes the side piece better. Though. Well, so let's be honest. I don't know. Usually they're better looking, but, um, <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, it's what I love about, fun. what I love about the idea of just create is that, um, I mean, I live, I'll, I'll explain a little bit when I talk about myself, but before that, just create is great because whether you're in, like product side, like I, I have lived kind of in product. And when I say product, you know, yes, I mean physical product, but I also mean software applications, teams like that, deploying deploying online product. Um, I mean, a pretty regular phrase that gets, that everyone gets reminded of is project done is better than project none, right? So yes. um, the same thing, version done is better than version none. Um, it's really easy as a creative, especially when things are coming from inside of you, like you, they're kind of these like little mini babies and you hold on to them and, uh, we'll get into some of that fun stuff later. But, um, we tend to, especially on our own projects, we tend to get a little bit stuck in our heads about stuff. And I think what's so great about just create is it just is that gentle nudge to kind of take a leap and go for something and not be so concerned with the outcome as much as the process. Uh, which is what I love about it. So, um, yeah, thanks for having me. I, I look forward to being around quite a bit. And, uh, you know, I think you, you plan to have other people come on as guests or other people join the conversation, right? So Yeah, be absolutely. Exciting. Yeah, we'll bring on different guests, uh, people with different backgrounds in, in, in the creative space. Uh, business owners that maybe not necessarily are the creative ones, but how they how they work with creative agencies, how they work with, uh, you know, talents like yourself and, and, you know, my business and that type of thing. So. Um, so, yeah, we'll definitely be bringing on guests. But the whole idea of this whole whiskey thing is just I always find it. <clears throat> I mean, let's just face it. I feel like we always solve world problems. When we just have a conversation, we have a glass of whiskey around a smoke. And uh, we just have a good time. So kind of like, 100%. Let's, just, let's just bring people along with that. So, so here we go. So today's topic. Uh, that Wait, we hold on. Wait, what? Wait, what I, I want to talk about, I, I got to talk about myself. I didn't introduce oh. myself. Oh. You haven't done that yet? What so, was all this about? Oh, I'm just kidding. I, it was me. It was me giving you congratulations and, and oh. uh, kiss, kissing your <laughs> See, ass a little bit. Are we allowed Maybe to that's why I was. Is this a, what maybe. is this PG or PG? Yeah, no, no, what, what yeah, no, here? let it fly. And what's funny okay. is that, that maybe that's why I felt like we were fulfilled. I was fulfilled enough where we move on to the next subject. Yeah, it was yeah, all about so, you. So it yeah. was, it was. Uh, maybe I am the Sherpa after all. My back is <laughs> hurting a little bit. Uh, no, so so my name is Nick uh, Heller. Um, I own a company called Nick Work. Um, silly little story. Basically, um, as Thomas said, I've had a pretty circuitous path. I started out as an audio engineer. I worked for a band for a couple of years uh, as a road manager in front of house. Um, I decided to, I didn't want to travel full time, moved back to Arizona, uh, enrolled in ASU to kind of finish up a second degree. And while I was doing that, I thought, you know, I know enough musicians. Like I had been dabbling a little bit in merch design for the band I was working for. And so I thought, I'm just going to reach out to some folks and see if I can like just make a few bucks every month while I'm going to school. And, um, 
between them and kind of my relationship to a lot of people through the church community I was part of when I was younger. Um, I, I started working 80 hours a week within like the first three months. So, um, I mean, it was just crazy. I literally knew nothing. Uh, you know, my background was in audio. I, I, YouTube didn't really exist yet. So I was like making up things as I went or trying to find tutorial websites on like geo cities. You know, this was like MySpace days, uh, taking it way back. Um, that is... <laughs> but yeah, so, so it's, I kind of started a design agency in the early, uh, I guess late 2000s, 2008. Um, I did strictly kind of graphic design, merchandising, posters, apparel, that kind of stuff for the first couple of years. Uh, but what it started happening was everybody wanted a website. Everybody needed a website. And so I didn't necessarily want to learn how to code, but I knew I could sit in the chair as far as like front end and uh, what we now call UI UX, right? So it was about, you know, back then things didn't really work as well. There weren't templates. You kind of had to make it up as you go and you had to find, you know, coders to work with. Um, so I got into web design a little bit and then that took me into uh, 3D design. So I went into event, uh, event design. I was working for a company to incorporate events, um, you know, and then from there, I've just kind of, as, as I've, gotten older and you know i've always taken the approach of like always say yes to opportunity but also always say yes to like those kind of inner like those gut feelings of like i i want to try to learn this thing you know and so yeah. i would just see something i loved on online or you know traveling or whatever and go like i gotta figure out how to do that you know so like one like i did an album cover that was an amp right and i had to figure out how to do the like gold kind of foil look of the Fender logo for the banding, you know, and like took a week to figure that one thing out, but just doing that over and over and just playing and kind of living in the sandbox, but like really challenging the boundaries, uh, I think is what helped me kind of grow into a multidisciplinary designer. And then you fast forward today and I'm really kind of past a lot of that in ways, but it's because I'm mostly in creative direction, brand strategy, um, and like business consulting. So, you know, kind of that sweet spot where a lot of times when we get to work together, it's on things like marketing campaigns or storytelling from a brand perspective for a client. Yep. Um, and so, you know, I'm really excited to kind of dive into that stuff. So that's that's kind of my background and where I'm at today. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah. It's Thank you extensive. for allowing me to introduce myself. It was painful, but it, it worked. <laughs> I'm telling you, people are going to like you better. It's OK because you are the side piece. Yeah, oh, appreciate that. My God, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> um, so today's topic. Now, the today's topic is pretty general. I mean, there's, I think there's going to be a lot of points in this that we want to make other shows on. But uh, since this is the first show, we're going to kind of sort of hit a little bit of a general, get some points here. But uh, today's topic that we want to talk about is just the challenges of being a full time creative. I mean, you and I have definitely have run into many of them. Um, and what kind of inspired this is that you and I both, we both follow that design humor, uh, uh, -huh. uh yep. memes that, uh, it's on Instagram. Uh, they're so classy, but what kind of inspired this particular episode was the meme where it's, it's OJ Simpson's like, but our, uh, Bronco and with all these cops following them uh -huh. and like, we're the, we're the, we're the Bronco. And then all the cops are all the different challenges that creatives have. I mean, it could be from from self-doubt pain or health, you know, health, uh, just software, Soft, crashing, software yeah. crashing, yeah. clients not paying. Yeah. Just yeah. everything. And so I think, I think it would be a great first place to talk about. Cause I think almost every creative can have experienced this and has, it could relate to this and just doesn't know exactly how to overcome some of these challenges. So we want to tackle that today. So, uh, I know you kind of hit on some really good points, but what are, as being a full-time creative as you are, what are some of the challenges? And I know you've been kind of dealing with some of them, you know, even today, uh, what are some yeah. of the biggest challenges that you find and, uh, and kind of take it from there. We'll go from there. Well, I, I mean, and interject anytime you feel like, uh, you know, please interject anytime you have something to add or you disagree. I think disagreement's a lot of fun. Uh, we'll be friends at the end of this. Never Absolutely. disagree to be angry, disagree to make a better conversation, right? So, yep. uh, but for me, the number one, like if we were going to like do this as like a draft for all the sports fans out there, like one, one overall first pick in the draft to me goes to imposter syndrome, uh, which is like that whole like self-doubt thing. And I think, I think the hardest 
thing about being a, I mean, talk about adding two things together that don't work well together, which is um, create sub mostly subjective things for a living, right? When you're creative, like most of what you do is uh, when it comes from within, it's like not objective. It's not like you're solving math for money. You know, like you don't come to me and go, tell me four plus seven and I'll give you a nickel. Like, it's like, I want a really cool logo. And what I think is really cool and you think is really cool is probably hopefully very aligned and, and you learn how to help people get there. But when something's subjective, you already kind of are chopping yourself in the knees. And then on top of that, when you're creating and working for yourself, you're trying to put kind of social and monetary value on things that could be of different value to everybody. And it's your livelihood. So you're like trying to run a business, which is hard. You're trying to be vulnerable enough to give people ideas that come from inside you, which is challenging in of itself. And on top of all of that, other people might not see it the way you see it, you know, and I'm going to kind of make fun of you a little bit in a second after I finish my thought, but uh, on that note, but you know too much about me. That's, that's, that's well, I think you just talked about it um, anyway, but the, the kind of the last thing I thought there is like imposter syndrome is every day. Mostly I think people struggle with, and on a good day, you don't struggle with it a lot. Like, am I good enough? Is my work good enough? Is it valued by other people? Um, and usually the satisfaction comes in getting paid for it, right? Like, which is hard because it should have yeah. just natural baked in value because you made it. Yeah. Um, but you can't live on just having a stack full, like you could edit all of the videos in the world that you wanted, but if nobody ever pays you for them, like your wife and kids are probably going to be pretty upset eventually. Yeah. So that, that part mixed with just is what I make good enough, I think is a huge challenge for creatives. Um, and to poke fun of you real quick, like the, the value thing, like you talked about, you had just, you were actually telling me earlier about how you want to redo the Just Create logo. Uh, so sorry, spoiler alert, maybe, but. Spoiler alert, uh, no, that's, that's uh, good. But oh, you were talking la last time or on an IG Live or something about how you had made a Just Create logo and like you loved it. You're not a designer, it took you all day. You showed it to me. I had a little bit of like constructive criticism for you, but but I didn't pick up on what your wife picked up on. And what you had created basically was this like circular, like emblem style logo, right? Would just create in it. And you had made this kind of like triangular shape from the middle and it was supposed to be kind of like a spotlight or a magnifying glass. Like, yeah. you know, it, it you had a lot of layers of meaning. It was all about like, my perspective on being creative and you showed it to your, your wife, right? What did your wife yeah. say? Uh, that's a really cool looking pie chart. <laughs> <laughs> Which honestly, it, it ended up looking like a pie chart, right? So, yeah. Like, uh, so that's challenging because it's, I mean, I think you probably a little bit, maybe not imposter syndrome and that's in, in that particular sense, but like, man, all that time I spent, you know, and like yeah. it worked out to just being a cool pie chart. Yeah. So when those kind of hits come and they do come, they come in uh, video production, they come in telling stories through film or through uh, campaigns or they come through um, storytelling, copywriting, whatever, like you almost never get it right right away. And it's a little different than art. The way I kind of talk about it is art is your ability, even when it's commissioned, is your ability to express yourself and have a group of people that appreciate it design and creativity can sometimes be a little bit different because you're also trying to solve somebody's problem. And so finding the marriage there is hard. So that's another, that's really another challenge I think is um, when you, when you finally get past the imposter syndrome and all that self doubt, like you, then you get to, is my work doing the job it needs to do because it has to do a job at the same time. So those are my one and two. What are, what are your thoughts? What are kind of a couple for you that are, that are things you deal with pretty often? I mean, that is definitely a, a big one, but I, I would go more um, just for the sake of being different. Um, uh, it, it, would it, would, it would probably be the fact of um, having the structure and the discipline to, to be able to operate a business. Because I think as us creatives, we want like, yep. we, we, are, we are distracted so easily. 
uh, I, I know for myself, right? For example, like one of the things that you're kind of talking about with the imposter syndrome, right? Um, you know, I know what I'm really good at. However, there is a lot of cross threading when it comes to certain skill talents. And, you know, in video, you know, it's, there is a lot of cross threading when it comes to be like having to design certain like uh, text and script and different logos, you know, cause people want some like uh, some, some of their, um, their own, you know, uh, their own stuff, not just stock stuff, right? You have to actually, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, have a, uh, it's not, not be templated. The opposite of being a template, you know, Custom. customized. Thank you. Custom. Yep. I need a drink. You got um, it. Yeah. To so, custom. To, you know, yeah, to custom, <laughs> to customize. Um, so, you know, so in, in, in there, those are some areas that I'm definitely not uh, an expert on, but yet I try to get through it. And so you're kind of providing, um, you're kind of providing that. But anyway, when it comes to structure is that next thing you know, instead of just spending the time that I'm good at and then delegating, we, we end up automatically thinking, oh, we need to learn this and I need to learn that and I need to learn this. And, uh, yep. um, and then you're spending a lot of time not really doing what you're really good at. And so uh, having that structure, you get clear on exactly what it is that you're good at, what you could work on and then what you could delegate. And that's how you only, that's the only way you're gonna grow your business. But when we try to feel like we have to do it all and we wanna do it all because it is intriguing, it is something new and creative that we want to be able to, to learn on and feel better about ourselves about it. Um, it's just running a business that way is not, is not gonna lead you to success. Um, and on, not on, on the flip side of that, or on the other side of structure, it's just the whole business aspect of, of the operations of, of, okay, you know, you have a certain talent, but can you do sales? Can you do the marketing? Can you do your accounting? Can you do your, you know, um, all the legal, legal stuff that you want to prepare, you know, you need to prepare yourself with that's so overwhelming. And so as a creative, I'm just like, screw it. I'm just going to put my stuff out there and we'll see where it goes. But it's like building a house on quicksand. You're just going to end up start crumbling. And, and so the biggest thing for me, I think is, is always a, a, a challenge is, is making sure that you built that foundation before you start feeling like you're ready to run and, and move forward. Otherwise it's just going to come crashing down later on. And it took me a little while to figure that out and still working on the foundation. I mean, even things like websites, like for yourself, I was just telling you the other day, I was like, man, I really wish I knew how to do websites because you know, I, I need to update mine <laughs> and I have no idea where, you know, I have an idea what copy I want to put, how it make it look, but to actually do it, to take action on it, nor do I have the time or the time to learn or the knowledge to learn. I have to get someone involved. And I mean, obviously that would be someone like you, you know, you want to build my website originally, but at the same time, I feel kind of naked in the fact that I don't have that. Right. So it's always that conundrum, like, because I don't have this knowledge, am I still good enough? Am I even a business? And, but like, I know I have to focus on what I'm good at, you know? So it's just this always constant, just push and pull, uh, trying to figure out, you know, wh where do I want to spend my time in? Um, and how do I want to make that, how do I, how do I want to make my business structured and, and foundational? So that way, when it does get to a point where it needs to scale and grow, those processes are already in place to do that. And so when I bring on other people, it's an easy explanation. Okay, this, you know, if this, if you have this problem, this is where you need to go. This is how we go bring on uh, onboarding a, a new client. This is the finishing. This is how we deliver. You know, those are all things that we have to put in place. And, and that's always the toughest because it's not the f most fun. I hate it. Yeah. I hate it with a passion. Yeah. So. yeah. It's, I mean, you, in my experience, so I've just because of kind of the way my career has gone, I've had to learn those skills. I mean, you, you know, you worked for me at one of, you know, my last employer when I was full time somewhere, you were, you were part of our team. And, you know, I mean, I was pretty heavy on the project management stuff because it really is, it's really hard. And I know, especially with like a bunch of different creative people, I mean, one creatives are generally a little bit more emotional. We just are, that's, we all show it differently and we all act differently, but we're pretty emotional. We're not super analytical, like, and that's good. I think that's what we need in our, in our art forms. Um, but project management is one of those things that I've had to kind of learn to love because it saves the day so often, you know, and I think in the same way, what you said before, like 
building that house on sand, like this, the unfortunate thing, and I think we've both had experiences of this, you don't realize that sometimes until it's too late, right? And so one of the big things I'm kind of thinking about right now is like, how do you help people that want to jump into being a freelancer or, or a creative endeavor understand how crucial the not fun stuff is because it allows them freedom later to not be worried. You know, like, is my contract going to fall through because it wasn't well written or am I going to get paid because I don't have a good payment system set up, you know? And, and then this, the benefit, I think, and you appreciate this, like when you get those systems set up, you free yourself up from like not slogging through it every day, you know, like you, set time aside in your whatever it is quickbooks or whatever you have an invoicing platform like you just get a process down and it frees up more time and headspace to be creative again so super like super crucial stuff um have to have it ultimately has nothing to do with what you're going to output no but you can't but you can't output those things if you don't have the other stuff figured out so yeah it's certainly it's a huge challenge and it's nothing that I wanted to go into. It's not why I started this business. Right. I didn't want to do yeah. You, you didn't want to be a CPA. So no, you don't want to do accounting, right? Like, no, I, yeah, I just want to be paid and, and do my work and be on, you know, and be mm-hmm. my own boss. But it's just like, you realize you're like, Ugh, it, it's <laughs> actually you wear a lot of hats. You, you wear, wear a lot, lot of hats. hats. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's what I, I think that kind of leads to another part of this segment Um, yeah. is that we do wear a lot of hats and it's not, and, and, and honestly, that's pretty similar to other industries and other businesses, um, mm-hmm. you know, you know, especially, you know, anyone's trying to run it in some type of marketing agency or or they're a consultant. They all have to wear different hats. And I get that. However, I do think we are a very specialized industry where we run into issues that no one else seems to like run into. And one of those is like this urgency that people know that they need our work, but they sure like, and I want to be obviously as polite as possible, but uh, the urgency of, of like the whole negotiating process in establishing mm-hmm. your, your rate and your income. And I know I, that could be a whole subject that we could talk about later on, but I want to kind of sort of just sort of tap into it a little bit just to kind of uh, give an idea like, I think it happens to all of us creators. Like, why are we the only ones that have to negotiate how much we work or like how much we get paid for what we think our value is? Um, you know, you kind of bring up some good examples of <laughs> the differences yeah, yeah, between yeah. industries. And I, and, you know, I'll let you hit that because it's pretty, pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I like, I think it goes back a little bit to the subjectivity of it, right? I think it also is, again, being polite, but you know, just the, the fact of the matter is, is most clients and people who don't do what we do have like, when people go like, Oh, I don't have a creative bone in my body. They're not lying to you. They are, you know, those people might be accountants or they might run, you know, they might be office managers or when they're clients, they might be, uh, you know, a principal in a, you know, in a tech company or, or something not related to creativity or, invention at all of, you know, like a CPA firm, uh, you know, a teacher, uh, a school, like, and so what happens is people go, well, you know, like how much, how much is it going to cost me? And it's like, well, I don't really know what you need yet. And so it's hard for me to say that. And they're like, well, how much is it per hour? And it's like, well, it depends. Right. So, we, we should dive into that. I think that's a great topic to really do a deep dive on. It's probably like a whole series. Um, but I think, you know, what's funny about it is like, it can be frustrating as a, as a freelancer because, you know, I don't like as a homeowner, when I, when, when I, um, when my, um, garbage disposal goes bad, right? Like Mm -hmm. I go, okay, I have a need. The need is I need a new garbage disposal. Um, I don't know how to do that. I know nothing about garbage disposals. I do know plumbers know how to do it. Right. Right. So, you know, the parallel is like, okay, I know I need, um, I need a logo, which I would say, you don't need a logo. You need a visual identity and a brand and everything goes around that. But people go, I need a logo or I need a website. I know a designer. I'll see if they do it. And that's where kind of the parallel stops because with the plumber scenario, it's they, they come in and go, yep, garbage disposal is broken. 
um, my time to come out, it's a $95 service fee and the garbage disposal is $285 and then I'll fix it. Uh, that'll be another 200. You're out the door just shy of 500 bucks and I could do it next Wednesday. And you're like, okay, I, the only option I have here is to find another plumber to give me a quote where he has a service fee and I, I have to still play, pay for the garbage disposal and they still have to come out later and do it. There isn't really a lot of negotiating when it comes to other trades, no. right? Like, like you don't go into your kid's class and your teacher and like, do you, should you really make that much? Like, <laughs> you know, like it just doesn't exist. But for whatever reason, when it comes to, I need video work done, I need a logo done, I um, I need headshots done for my, you know, sales brochures, you know, what's it going to cost me? And we, we have to try and come up with a value that makes sense to them. Right. There's a couple different ways to look at that, right? And, and usually what's so frustrating about it is then they want to negotiate. Is it really going to take 10 hours? And you're like, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it is. And it might take more than that, depending on how involved you are, client, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's the, that scenario or, you know, well, is there, are you really worth that much per hour? And it's like, yeah. And you, you know that, so we can kind of talk through, I think the three different ways that at least I price things and you probably are very similar in this. Um, one is project based, like project based yep. rate. Two is retainer. Yep. And third is value based and value based can kind of fit into either of those. I think if you, the more comfortable you get with pricing things and the more you understand how your competitors or your colleagues price things, um, it helps you kind of understand like the value you bring. It's more about the value you bring to the business than the value you bring about yourself. Right. right. I've always, so, I, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Well, like I said, I, I, what I have transformed, I mean, what it took me a little while to get to this sort of mind change was that I'm, I'm no longer selling videos. I'm selling, you know, I'm selling, um, I'm selling, uh, uh, results. I'm selling results for the business, uh, for their business. So, uh, you know, for like, for my, for, for example, you know, instead of talking about how much a video is, I first kind of try to dive in. And obviously this is, it, it takes time and used to, to understand like what the right questions to ask. I mean, there's a whole process in, involved with this. But I, I always ask what their lifetime value of their customer is. Mm -hmm. And if th this video could bring in, let's say two customers, you know, what's the lifetime value of that, you know, they'll say something along the lines of, oh, that'll give me like $10,000 for just for two customers that this video yeah, would yeah. do. And right. so it's like, okay, well, do you find it, you know, um, then beneficial for you that you invest $5,000 to make 10,000, right? Um, and, and obviously it's sometimes it's a little bit more drastic than that, but, um, just to kind of give an example. And so the, the pricing has always been a, obviously a t touchy point. And to be honest with you, uh, what I've also noticed that anyone that is so set on a necessarily like a budget and can't like do anything, one, it's going to come down to, do you want to still, you know, do you still want to do business with them because you have a relationship with them or you think like it could lead to somewhere else? Be very careful of mm -hmm. that. But that's a decision on your own. You know that you're, you know, that's, that's your own decision. But two, they may not just be the client for you, right? They're, they yeah. they may be in a position where that's where they need to turn to other resources like Fiverr or, you know, very uh, budgeted, friendly uh, mm -hmm. situation or uh, services and agencies versus them working with you. And you have to be okay with that. You have to be okay with that. Because the moment when I realized that I started accepting lower, lower costs, just saying yes, just to say yes, that's all I was attracting. And I was wondering why in the world can I not track some of the higher and the more bigger budget? Because that's, that's, that's the level I want to be at. Right. And so, um, I mean, there's other stresses that are completely involved with that. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but, you know, there's a certain type of level of work that I want to be able to showcase. And that's the pride in it. But, you know, to be able to track that, sometimes you, ha you you're going to have to stay disciplined and structured and, and believe in yourself. I yep. circle back around. Yeah, um, nice. You know, to 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 understand that you got to have to say no. You're going to have to say no to some of those things and be OK with that. Um, oh, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I think you're spot on with all of that. I think I would add one other kind of thing there. Like, you know, they might not be the right client, but the other thing that sometimes happens is 
clients, it's great when a client shows up with an idea of what they need, but um, discovery is for me is the most crucial part of any project. And sometimes what can happen is they think, you know, I need, I need A, B, C, and D for, and I only have two grand. And you're like, well, you know, okay. I can't do it. I can't do it for two, you know, like, but <laughs> like if two's all you have right now, I want to work with you still to provide a solution. And so can we get away with doing A and B as phase one? Mm-hmm. And then once you get some traction with those, we can go back to C and D and really explore those further. And maybe, maybe at that point, A and B have now paid for C, D, E, F, G, whatever. Right. So mm-hmm. sometimes when it works out, you know, and it all comes down to that kind of the amount of effort you can give something versus what you need to get paid quotient. But if you have the time and space, sometimes it's nice to say yes, because the, the lifetime value of your client might actually be quite significant, you know, and instead of just saying, I can't do this right now. Of course, you know, as you know, there are really busy seasons in being uh, a freelancer as well. And so sometimes you have to say no, or I, I really need six to eight weeks before I can think about it. Um, which is a great problem to have, you know, and, and the right, the people that want to work with you and see what you can produce, uh, are either going to circle back around or they're going to, they're going to make it work, you know? Yeah. So I think there's a lot of interesting ways to help clients. I, I really try to start the problem solving in the discovery. And I like to think yep. of discovery as kind of, you know, the, like pulling back on the arrow before you release it. Right. So it's all that built up potential energy. You want to get it right. You want to align clients' expectations to where you're headed. Like this is how far the arrow is going to go if we pull it back this far. In the same way, this is how much we can do if you have that kind of budget. You know, so discovery is super important to that part. I think um, I had another thought and I lost it. I'm sure I, I'm sure I'll think of it again. But. Well, I mean, it, I think you hit it right on the key when it comes to that discovery part. I think. Um the moment the, the 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 work that I've done without the discovery has always 100% led to just nightmares, headaches, nightmares, headaches, headaches, headaches. headaches yeah. just yeah. like to a point where it's like, like, yeah, this, this, you know, that may be a bigger budget or whatever. Let's say that you're getting 10 grand of it. I mean, to think, to think like, we're like, I'm so done with this. I don't even give a crap about the 10 grand. <laughs> just go away. I just want you to go. Yeah, away. You want to just give it back it. at that point. Yeah. You're just, like you're like, take your money back. Nice knowing you. Like, yeah. how crazy is that to think that we worked so hard to get to the point that we're really at a point to be like, peace, I'm out. I f- yeah. Forget the money. It's not worth it. Like, that's that's mind boggling. But that's that's the situation you want to avoid. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. And I think I think what happens early on for people, not that this show is just about helping people thinking about doing this, but um, I think what happens is you you know, you have to find the balance between saying yes to new opportunities because you don't know where they can lead and saying yes to everything at a detriment to your identity, who you are, what your value is. And so, um, you know, I try not to, I kind of have my target goals. I think we, we can get into this a lot, the math of it later, but like, I know what I want to make a year and then I have to figure out how to get there. And so it's some combination of projects, retainers, value-based pricing, to make that happen. Um, you just have to keep your finger on the pulse as far as like, it isn't always just about the money. It's about growing for me anyway. It's about growing as a creative. It's about collaborating with people. You know, one, a couple things that I'm like, just have circled on every board. And I keep saying every day right now is um, I want to help businesses and, you know, colleagues alike level up. Like I let's, how do I help? How, what can I bring to the equation to help you get a level up, you know, or more? Um, because people are doing great things. Like businesses are doing really cool shit. Um, yep. People, there are people that are so much more talented than I am, but the, I might still be able to bring a little piece of wisdom or a little like, hey, have you checked out this app yet? Or have you talked to so-and-so? Um, right. In a way that I think collaboration be, among colleagues and it benefits everybody. And so the other phrase I use a lot is the, you know, JFK made it famous, but uh, it's that, you know, a rising tide lifts all boats, right? Mm -hmm. So the idea of like, even things like pricing, I think we have a huge mountain to climb when it comes to transparency among colleagues and competitors, because I think we're so focused on 
well, that person might outbid, you know, they might undercut me by $5 an hour or something and they might get the project because the client doesn't value me. They just value the budget. And again, that goes back to like, maybe not a good client. Um, But I think if we just help each other out, I think if we support each other and we talk about, you know, how like Thomas sitting with you and whiskey and going, how can I go from 10 K a project to 15 K? Like, what does that road look like? I think we can all help each other out in that way. And I think, um, the, the crucial part there is having the integrity to never, you're not like trying to job or con clients, right? Like you're not trying to overcharge for things, but just, just, I think in a lot of ways, just like vehicles, like there is the Honda version of creativity and there's the Ferrari version. And like you said, where you want to live and what your personal goals are have to line up with what kind of work you're producing for clients. So there's, there's a lot to consider in there. Yeah, um, and I think it, that the freedom is you can do all of those things of your whole career. Like you could be budget for a while. You can then be really niche and do like one project a year for a lot of money. The, the sky's the limit. Yeah. I mean, I know one guy who does like a weddings and he literally just does. I mean, you think weddings, so everyone has to book every single weekend during the wedding season. This guy books one wedding a whole year and yeah. is like charges like a quarter million dollars to do this one wedding. Now to me, that's crazy because one, that's, that's highly stressful, right? For sure. As in the expectation if someone's paying me a quarter million to do a wedding yep. video, like, like that's, but I mean, he goes to the most extravagant places. It's the, it, they are, um, extremely, I mean, they look like a quarter million dollar, you know, videos and, yeah. but the, the, the time, the planning and the, and all of that, that has to go in to execute that particular wedding day, um, is pretty amazing. But, um, so you, you know, it's kind of like he made the decisions. Like, I just want to work one job, get one job. And if, it, you know, if, if, if the client says I only have 75,000, he's, he says, that's, that's not my price. He's yep. okay with just saying no, but you know, it's, it is getting clear on what kind of, you know, level you want to be at. And, uh, mm-hmm. and that kind of, kind of sort of goes, so you may, you may disagree on a little bit of this. Um, okay. you know, I kind of think of, or, or somewhat disagree. And you kind of brought it up a little bit earlier is that, some of the practicals I say, like if you're like if you're a new, if you're just starting off uh, in your own creative agency and you're trying to make this a full time position, or you're doing this as a full time work, or you are doing this full time work but you find yourself struggling, here are some practical techniques that I feel like uh, helps push you along, keep you focused, um, and and um, and it gets you to that point, right? Because to me, and and this is how I operate. The only way I get clear on things is just by doing things and by doing, and even if they may be the wrong situation or the wrong experience, that experience told me that I would never want to do that again. So I will, <laughs> I'll say no next time when I see this. <laughs> right. <laughs> I heard, like, I heard it. I, heard, I think this is awesome. I, and I'm going to like, I want to tattoo it on my body somewhere. I heard the other day, I either win or I gain a lesson, but I never lose. Yes. So yes, I think that's like, what a great way to shift the mind frame of like, I didn't, I didn't get owned on that project or I didn't, you know, lose my shirt on it or I didn't misquote it. Like, man, I, I learned a lesson, though I don't ever do that again. So that from now on yes. I can win. Yeah, I think exactly. So, like for yeah. example, like for me, I'm not gonna lie, like working with uh, life coaches or, or, or speakers, like public speaker type of uh, influencers, never, ever, ever would work with them. I love, I am friends with some of them. I love them, but as God, clients or like as in your clients. Life? Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. As clients, I never, I, I decided from that point forward, like I did one and the amount of time and, and like focus they want, like you, that's going to be your only client. That's the, that's, that's all yeah. you have time for. And that's just yeah. not the way I, that's not the way I want to start my business. But I didn't know that until, cause I, I'll be frankly, everything, everyone want to do this Gary V style stuff. And you know, they all want yeah, to yeah. have their own videographer. And I'm like, I don't want to be a videographer. I got to be better than that. And, and not that there's nothing wrong with it. If you want to do that, you do that. That's just not what I yeah. wanted to do. I want to do films. I want to do, I want to be more than just a camera guy. Right. And so, yeah. so that's where that kind of switch came from. But, but I didn't know that unless I actually said yes. And so one of the, some practicals that I said is I say yes to almost everything before you start saying no. And 
And I know it's like you have to be careful when to make it switch to start saying that no or when, you know, you don't want to put yourself in a position where you just screw yourself over. But but that's one of the things I always I did as I said yes to everything. I was doing videos from, you know, s some of the uh, big, large productions to to being a one man crew on just being uh, doing a lot of like event highlight videos. That's not what I wanted. I said yes to it because it, it got me more and more experience said yes to wedding videos the earlier on, but like eventually I, I, I weeded those out, but I knew that it was, it was a stepping stone to something better. Right. So, but you kind of mentioned something along the lines of you want to be clear before you start saying that stuff or start doing it. Well, I think there, so let me make a distinction. I think when you're young in the process, you have to say yes to learn what your boundaries are. I think it's part of determining like, what am I good at? Um, what do I want to do? Where it starts to get really scary to me is you, you can get like saying yes too often. You've probably experienced this and I know I have like project creep is a dirty word Ooh. in freelance and creative world. Right. Cause it's like yeah. you, you have a scope of work. Like you go through all of this trouble of defining like what our relationship is client to you know, freelancer, you get into it. And then especially kind of those life coaches, I bet it's like, Hey, just one more thing. Hey, can you, Hey, I need you to just do this one more thing. Hey, I need one more edit for the, I need, I need, and I need it right now. I need it right now. I need it. I need it right now. And you know, you know, now, you know, 10 plus years into it, like there's money in that, right? Like, and a good way to weed out someone's actual urgency and needs is to put a budget on it. But when you're starting out, I think you have to say yes to opportunity, but not necessarily say yes to letting other people drive the boat, like drive the ship for you. Like, like that's a good point. It, you're not going to have, you're not going to be settled. If you're anything like me and maybe most people aren't, if you are though, you're not really ever going to know exactly what you are. Like right. my sister, my wife knew exactly what they wanted to be early on. I think creatives just part of being inventive and exploratory is, you kind of like shift and mold. Yeah, you're always and meander. Or something different. And I, you know, like for a long time, I said I'm still waiting to figure out what I'm going to be when I grow up. And I think what I, I think what I landed on is like I'm just going to be curious. Actually, like I, I'm not going to be a thing. I'm just going to be curious. And so this year I might be doing brand and strategy, but next year maybe I'm a full time artist. You know, I don't know. Um, and if some people go like that's that's crazy like you just laughed at me but like that for me is that's well, that's what it looks like uh yeah. so for me saying yes is yes to opportunity because uh let me let me back up so i have on my website you can schedule a 30 minute call with me right? right and i don't put any parameters on that i don't charge for it it's a free conversation we can talk about this or sports or whiskey or we can talk about a business need you have or Someone could call and ask for advice. I mean, I'm good with that. I think I'm willing to invest 30 minutes into any conversation to see if there's an opportunity to make that something bigger. Right. I also know that more than 30 minutes is wasting my time and other potential opportunities. The opportunity cost of getting into these projects where you say yes and project creep, like you know, like when you're with a client way too long, you're losing opportunities yep. because you should have been done and onto other projects by that point. You should yeah. be spending time networking with colleagues or other potential clients. Like, so that's where you have to kind of, it's, it's a yes and no for me. Now I think as I've gotten older, I'm, I'm just generally cynical and pessimistic. Um, <laughs> oh, so I, I actually start saying no first because what's really fascinating is I'm, I'm also hopelessly romantic. So I want the best possible outcome. I have rose colored glasses from the beginning. So whether it's like a business partnership or I'm going to create a whole new business on my own, or I'm going to build a house and who knows where it's all going to go right. Right. Like for me, it's like, there's no challenges. It's perfect. So I've learned to kind of go, I'm, I'm going to say no to that because I'm impulsive. Um, you know, and if I wake up tomorrow and I'm still a yes, then I'm going to explore it pretty deeply. So I kind of reposition that a little bit. But I've also been afforded the luxury of that because I've, you know, I have a couple of really great clients. I'm not super worried about income or where I'm headed. Um, and so if you can build that space in, I think you should get to a point where you can say no. But early on, especially, you have to say yes because you want to put yourself out there and get to know yeah. people. And 
I think one of the greatest things you've done is by saying yes, is you have some really incredible relationships, both with, you know, clients and people that refer you to other clients, but also with some colleagues. And I know people you look up to in your industry who have been really helpful to you and kind of growing what you're doing. So there's, Man, you there's just, benefit to both. You just like literally took number two away. You, my Good. second practical was about relationships, focus on relationships. Um, and so you, you hit it right on the point, like all my work wasn't through, it wasn't through like some type of, uh, Facebook campaign and doing ads and trying to do that. It's all been through based off of relationships. Um, and, and so, um, and those ones are, I find to be more successful. And so, um, you know, I would focus on building those relationships. And if you have a certain like industry that you want to hit, go make relationships in those industry and show them what you can do. Um, be very niche when it comes to that. Um, I think that also is a, is a huge, uh, thing that you want to focus on in order to help you get you to that, to, to start and get you to that next level is focus on those relationships. Um, yeah, <laughs> the, the other, the, there's like Sorry, give me three didn't... more. What's I didn't that? mean to take the wind out of your sails. I no, no, I'm glad it. you did it. No, I'm, well, I'm, it's okay. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Sorry no, about well, that. Here, here's I'm another gonna, one. I'm going to move on to my second. Yes, for mega poor. But here's another one where you make a poor is always be learning. I know it sounds very cliche, but uh, I think, and it's not necessarily on your craft, which is a yeah. huge thing you want to do, but always be learning on the different parts of running a business. Um, yep. and, and, and enough to, to know that you could get like, you could do it, get to understand where you're scaling at. Right. So if you're just starting off with yourself, learn the basics of what you need in order to run the company just by yourself. And then when you get, when you start growing, you start taking more work and then you start realizing I need a little bit more expertise in this particular field. It's not necessarily my skill set, but like, let's say in, in accounting, you know, or whatever, or, 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 uh, or follow-ups like a customer's process, you know, like a, yep. you know, process of, of doing follow-ups, the right follow-ups, right emails, copy, that type of thing, you know, then you could start going from there, but of hiring actual professionals, <laughs> not just do it yourself, but, uh, it's amazing what you could do when you just learn a little bit. <laughs> bootstrap, baby. Bootstrap. bootstrap. Yeah. Um, Focus on what you could control is another one. I, 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 not the results, just focus on what you could control. I think uh, as creatives, we are, we, we want our, <laughs> it's such instant gratification, but at the same time, it's instant like failures as well. Cause when we put your stuff out there, it's like, you get like really good, like remarks or you're going to get oh, the yeah. shittiest stuff and it's going to be instant no matter what. So, uh, we have to kind of sort of take a step back of like, you know, it's not so much the result, uh, use the results as like a, as a learning experience, kind of like what we talked about before, but, uh, just, just focus on what you can control at that moment and, and, and really learn to develop or really learn to love the process that you're putting yourself in through. And, uh, and I, and so that's what I would do. And then getting, get, un, get comfortable with being uncomfortable because it is scary shit to put your stuff out there for Cause everyone's a critic. Everyone's a judge. They're just going to judge you and you're just going to have to accept it. You know? So you got to be uncomfortable yep. with that or you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Otherwise you ain't going to make it. You got to have that mental fortitude. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, uh, first of all, did you take my notebook from my therapist? Because <laughs> Those are all the things I'm working on right now. Uh, but uh, no, I. <laughs> uh, she called me very. I, I was like, oh, okay. yeah, I'll, I'll help. She's you great. I, I like her a lot. <laughs> uh, I, I think I think it's really important to remember that, like, there's discomfort. Like, um, you know me, like, I'm not really on social media a lot. Um, like, I have an yeah. Instagram. I, I kind of like post when I want to post. But that came after like years and years of really using that vehicle to like creatively express myself. And it's just, I feel like gotten more and more binary. Like people are like either like, oh good or like shitty. Like, like we like you or get out, right? And um, so I, that's not how I choose to express myself. Like a lot of what I do is for myself. Um, 
I'm going to like your practicals are all so good that I'm just going to kind of like comment on them and add one or two more. Yeah. Um, relationships are really important for me. I'm, I'm like extroverted cause I love to like party and have a good time, but I'm introverted when it comes to, um, sharing about myself, like from a vulnerability standpoint or like creative, especially I'm, it's a pretty tight little circle of people I trust. Right. So, uh, for me, relationships is more, I always try to be like, I always try to have the posture of like, how can I help without necessarily having that reciprocated? And that's given me some pretty cool opportunities to, I mean, sometimes you don't get anything reciprocated. Sometimes you just get feel goods for like giving somebody advice or helping them win a project and like, you don't see anything. Other times they remember you and they say, Hey, you know, like let's work together on something. So for me, that's kind of how I focus on relationships. I'm not really like super putting myself out there. I'm not, out selling or looking for projects um so that we differ a little bit there but i think it's still focusing on relationships but i'm looking at your list say yes to everything we talked about always be learning is a huge thing we talked about that kind of at the top of the show like you know just create for me so well i'm going to add a very practical application to what you gave which is in my schedule monday mornings i have a four hour block of time So I do block, I do block scheduling. Um, now yours is probably a little different and you can talk about this when it comes to client shoots because you don't necessarily always control that. Um, but for me, my like cadence and routine of a week is the first four hours is setting up my week and setting the tone. So I'm mentally prepared of like what I have to work on so that when it gets to Friday, I block Friday off to either take time off, like to go be inspired again. Mm -hmm. or to further myself in something outside of the work that I do. So I I'm reading a couple of books on like goal setting and hero's journey. I am looking into, I took welding a couple of years ago. I'm probably going to take a welding class again. Um, But for me as a creative, I find that like when you're learning, like you said, when you're learning about things that even aren't necessarily more skill sets for your business or for your craft, but you're learning other things there's this interdisciplinary thing that happens where it either inspires the work you do it it adds to new relationships so like for me in a welding class like meeting other guys who are starting their little you know they i met one guy that has like a cnc woodworking company like he and i did some work together so you you provide yourself opportunities but you're also inspired to take philosophies and theories and ideas from a whole other thing and figure out how to creatively impart them onto what you do. And that helps make you more unique. And the more unique you are, the better your unique value proposition is and the more people want to work with you. So, you know, that looks like all sorts of things. You might love playing soccer. And so you play just, you know, rec league soccer, but all of a sudden you get, you score this sweet deal with the sports, you know, team to like design their jerseys and like, what a fun project you probably wouldn't have had otherwise. But you might also just take from that strategy and coaching. Like you might be the captain for a season and learn how to be a better manager because of that experience. So for me, like that's a huge thing is block time out for yourself. Make sure you're learning. Yes, you have to learn how to run your business. I personally do that during my business hours. I also then set aside time to learn other stuff. Right. The focus on what you can control and, and not on other things is a huge thing for me. That's why I made the therapist joke. Like I have a tendency to spiral. So I look at huge problems and businesses and I, I own this like little part and I'm like, Oh my, Holy shit. They have so many problems I could solve. And I, and I start hyperventilating and they all go home and like, I can't own their things. I can't care more than my clients care. And I can only control and I only should focus on things I can control. So that's a huge one for me. Um, now you should also care about the results for what you can control, but what you can't do is align your identity or self-worth with poor results inside of a company. If like for you, if you do a really incredible story for a client and then they just shit the bed on delivery, that's not your problem. Like, like if nobody ever sees it, you still created a beautiful story and that's where you, you have to stop with the results is I nailed the brief. I delivered on time, whatever those things are. If it never gets seen, like that's unfortunate, but it's not necessarily your responsibility. Right. So I think that's super helpful too. And then the getting uncomfortable, 
getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. Um, you got to put yourself out there. I think it's about, and I think the best way to get out there, like to, to shameless plug for just create is like, you just have to try stuff and you yeah. can't be afraid of failing and tripping over it. And I, you know, the best part to me about being a creative person is having these crazy ideas pop into my head. You know, you and I haven't done this yet, but we're going to go figure out how to do an art installation in the middle of the desert, the desert or the forest. Or the forest yep. Like we're going to, I don't know how it's going to work. We're probably the first three trips. We're not going to probably show anybody cause they're going to be epic dog failures. <laughs> Total dog it's it's going to, it's just going to turn into, into like, us just drinking beer at a campfire yeah, it'll, and be like, it'll Oh, at least we like, got to camp. <laughs> it'll go into the Christmas party. Like, you know, like, uh, blooper reel kind of yeah. a thing, but yeah. like it's, but it would be our trip, ugly sweater. Yeah, totally. Oh, we should do an ugly sweater. That's projection map. That oh fun. my God. Oh my God. Uh, but yeah, I think it's, but it's the fourth trip where you don't fail and you like all those yeah. failures lead to a success. And all of a sudden you're doing like crazy things that people haven't done before. So living in discomfort is super helpful i think the one practical i add as I, as i am kind of going through this in my life and it is kind of a hot topic now and i'm grateful for it is like you have to be um self-aware enough about your mental health that you don't push yourself into any of these practical areas yeah. when you can't do a good job fulfilling on them so if you're not in a good space and that could be as simple as i'm just not creative today like i just acknowledge it's it's noon. I've been kicking my own ass for three hours trying to get anything down on paper. I don't have any good ideas. I've learned like that's when I just take the day off. Yep. And it means I'm probably going to work Saturday or I'm probably going to work well into a night one night. But I give myself the freedom to say like what I need right now is to give myself a break. Because if I don't, my clients aren't. My work still got to get done. Like I still have to run a business. And you can push yourself into burnout. I've done that a couple of times, or you can push yourself into kind of a, oh, an unhealthy depressing. mental yeah. collapse. This, and I, and I think a lot of creatives deal with, you know, both anxiety and depression. I think both sides of, of kind of like the window of tolerance is, is a really important thing. So. Well, it's hard for us to turn that off on our minds, right? We have to, we really have to put ourselves to do something. So like for me, let me give an example. I started doing like, I'm almost 40 years old. You know, and never once, I mean, I used to play sports, a lot of basketball, football, whatever, but uh, for a while, you know, after having kids and, and all that, you just don't really do anything for yourself. You try to work out, but you don't work out towards anything. It's just kind of sucks, you know? So what yeah. I, you know, what I, I and, and I, especially this, obviously last year compared to everybody, but there was a huge, I mean, obviously you, you could feel it. I don't want to wake up in the morning. I don't have really desire to do anything. I can't come up with something creative. So I feel like shit because my whole life is centered around videos. Right. And so like, if I'm not doing a video today, I feel like I'm not getting anything accomplished. And yep. so, you know, that's the worst feeling to be. And so you have to kind of actually almost step away and try something different as in a completely different activity that doesn't require your creative mind. So like what I did, I started getting into martial arts mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, my son was in it I got him in it and I'm like, I probably should do the same thing. Um, and, and that has opened up tremendous amount of, uh, opportunity even for business. I've done sent out some videos for martial art companies. Uh, but that, that wasn't the point. The point was, is that I just did myself some, I, I, my mind was concentrating on something else, learning forms, learning the correct way of punching, learning the right way of kicking. Um, you know, memorizing the, like, like, you know, we're learning, you know, obviously the different techniques and things like that, but it's, it, it was just, it was a completely different mind. Uh, it, it tapped into the mind of, of uh, or a different side of my mind. Right. And so it wasn't about being creative. It was just about being disciplined. It was about being structured. It was about being memorization. And, and I just, and then I actually you know, I come back to the table and I'm like, Oh wait, I want to do this. I want to do that. You know, sit down with you. I'm like, hey, let's just let's do this show, you know. And so, uh, you know, that's that's something to kind of like, you know, put yourself do something that's like you say, you're doing welding or you're looking to get back into welding. Yep. You just do something that's completely offset. That's different than from your your day to day, because for me, I mean, video like people are like, hey, do you take so much videos of your family? I'm like, fuck, 
No. I'm like, <laughs> like, no, I don't. Like, every once in a while, I'll have a, like, honestly, like, I'll, uh, these days now, I'll give my son a GoPro, and I'm like, I give my son a GoPro and my daughter one, and I say, like, go have fun with it, and then whatever they get back, that's what we'll edit, and it's fun putting the edit together for them, right? But I didn't yeah, think yeah. about shooting. I'm on vacation. I don't want to think about that kind of stuff, but, yeah. um, so anyway, it's just, uh, it's just kind of being uh, away from uh, separate yourself from your job. And it's, it's hard to do that as a creative because your, your mind's always going, I can't, I lo- I've lost sleep. I've had to take melatonin just to, <laughs> just to yeah. drink and melatonin. And I thought I suggested yeah. you do that. That's not a, that's not a medical advice. That's not something I would suggest, but it was tough to turn my mind off during those times. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> So, all right. So as we wrap up here, buddy, I, I appreciate you coming on. We're, we're, there's so much more that we could dive into and we will definitely do that yeah. in, in the next shows. I think this is a great start, but uh, one thing I want to kind of leave off with, and, and this has sort of been my, you've been watching season two of Ted Lasso. Yeah, man. Oh, bro. So I never I'm complain watch- about streaks in my drawers. <laughs> we don't want to talk about the, the yippies. We don't know. Yeah. Ooh, yeah no, 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 but, no. Yes. Uh, yeah, no, yes, no, yes. You, so the the biggest the, the biggest thing that I've, I've sort of taken away for this this season, and this is sort of kind of like my almost my spirit animal in a way of 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 I'm just taking this approach, and I wish I could talk to clients like this, but like Roy Kent, can you imagine like my talk, favorite Roy oh Kent my. is my spirit animal. Yes, when he goes right? when he can goes you, like Sky Sports and just is who yes, he is just, authentically. Can Can you imagine just go to a client uh, like Oi? Hey, uh, your <laughs> your logo, my, my give, blind give mother with a one leg could do better <laughs> logo drawing than that shit. <laughs> uh, yes. Like, tell us I what wanted... you think, Roy. Oh, I think you're a terrible fucking manager. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get your ass out of here. Yeah. <laughs> get your head out of your ass. You suck. Uh, and then he just, the way he talks to the little kids, it's like, yeah, I, sometimes I feel like I need to be talked to like that. It's just like, oi, <laughs> you fucking play like shit. <laughs> get back out there. We'll get it back next time. Good job. That's funny. <laughs> yep. Uh, so that's I leave on that note is that uh, if you guys ever need an ass whooping, just just channel your Roy Kent. Channel your Roy Kent for sure. Yeah. So. Yeah. He's incredible. You're incredible. Um, I've had a lot of fun. I'm, I'm excited to continue to do this. Uh, I mean, I think I don't know about you, but I always feel like intro shows are the hardest thing because you want to like, set the tone and a lot of pressure to get it right. You look incredibly handsome today. So congratulations oh. on that. I decided to shave my big beard and just kind of leave a mustache thing. So, you know, I I'm that guy. Good. Well, but, you know, uh, it, it was just so sweet. My beard was like down to here. And then I know it was, it was getting rough. It was getting rough. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, thanks for having me. I, I'm, I think I'm going to make it really fun to, uh, dive into some topics and talk to other folks. And, uh, um, what's the takeaway? What do you want people to do after that? Um, I mean, I think the biggest takeaway is I, I hope that you understand that number one, uh, you, you're not alone in your struggles. You're not alone with your challenges. These are everything that, that, that we all deal with. Um, and then two, uh, how to deal with them. I think those, some of the practicals that we talked about, if we focus on those, that's the biggest, you know, that's going to help you mentally because everything that we do, even though we have our skill sets in, in what we do, everything is a mental game. And so, um, if we could conquer and, and stay, stay clear on that and stay focused on, on what our actual objective is. Uh, you know, this is the roadmap for that. And I, I hope that, that some of the, pro- I hope that's what they take away from this. Awesome. Yeah. I think for me, like I, you know, I've spent, I'm almost 42 and uh, 40 comma two. Um, I, I like, I, I think we live in a world where it's so easy to get bogged down by, so many things right and so i think um you know i'm a christian so i'm not gonna get preachy but i will say that like art and creativity are you know like you find truth and beauty through art and creativity just like you can in nature um i I think when you you know when you see something that's beautifully done whether it's a documentary or an oil painting uh, or a song or whatever that like people sharing about themselves is really important that it's not just create, like just do it to get it done. It's just create because the world needs it. 
And I think that's incredibly important. And I also think it's like, we're in a world where we, we need to start having some fun. Uh, and so I'm excited to just like, we were both pre put together today. We didn't drink enough whiskey, but, uh, 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 you know, I, uh, I just want to have fun. You know, everything's kind of silly to me. Everything's kind of, I'm always looking for like how to make life a bit and my wife hates it, but, uh, (laughs) everything's just comedy opportunity for me. So, um, who do you want? If people are going to follow you online, where are they going to follow you at? So yeah, you can follow me, um, on Instagram at TD films, 1904. Um, you can follow, obviously this show is going to be on YouTube. Uh, the channel is called just create. I will definitely be posting it on my Instagram. If, if any updates or any, I uh, think I do a lot through the Instagram, through the Instagram. What am I? What am I? The, nice. I'm getting old. Yeah. Uh, I do it through Instagram and also even uh, for business wise, uh, I do a lot on LinkedIn as well. Um, those are the kind of two main platform or three main platforms that I use. So YouTube, uh, just create, uh, and then uh, Instagram TD films at 1904 and then just Thomas Duran on LinkedIn and I'll have all those down as well. Say it one more time. I know you'll put it in at the bottom too, but at TD films, 1904, right? That is correct. At TD films, cool. 1904. And uh, you'll always get updates. Uh, and uh, we're going to try and make this a, a routine basis. Um, so stay tuned. I'm the best thing I could always ask for is just hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell. Um, so that way you're going to be notified when the next show comes up. Uh, we're going to try to do as consistent as we can. Um, you know, this is one of my, these are one of my block out times, you know, this is a priority for me and, and, uh, and, uh, so it's, it's going to be fun. Right on. And if people want to get a hold of me, they can visit me online on my website. It's, uh, just, uh, Nick work.us. Um, you can also hit me up on Instagram. I knew I wasn't, I, I said I wasn't going to do this, yeah, but, ooh, uh, this breaking news, I know breaking news. Um, I, uh, I'll tell the story sometime, but my Instagram handle is big trucker Four Twenty. I'm <laughs> not, I'm big, not a trucker, but you don't really trucks. smoke weed, but I'm big trucker Four Twenty on Instagram. Hit me up. Uh, I post just random photos of my travels and I'm always uh, willing to, catch a DM and chat. So anytime. Thank you. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, thank you again. And uh, I want you guys uh, just join us next time and I'll talk to you soon. Please let us know how this went. If you guys got any good nuggets out of it, all let me cheers. We got cheers at the end of this. Hold on. I got to I drank all mine. We got to do this. A little we'll bit. pour yeah. some more. I did a real okay. sly while you were talking. I was over Oh, here. nice. Man, yeah. I just, I actually just, I just, I'm going to finish it. There we go. Cashed it. All right. Hey, cheers, cheers buddy. my friend. Till next time. Later. All right. See you, buddy.